Good morning, everybody. I'm uh, Israel Navarro. I'm a PCM in the large airplanes department, as Carla indicated. And today I'm going to provide you a presentation on the ML, that is a proof model list. And I will review the updates that we have introduced into the certification memorandum on this subject that the ASA started last year. So you might recall from the STC workshop last year that we discussed AML STCs and we talked about the possibility of IASA raising a certification memorandum on this topic. This was effectively done uh, last year and it was uh, released for public consultation and this public consultation was closed with some comments just in November. Now we are expecting the final release of this certification memorandum within a few weeks, or no more than a few months. So uh, based on this, I'm going to provide you an overview of what this certification memorandum will, will contain. So first, I will provide some definitions to have a common understanding of the topic. We'll go on to provide some general considerations so you know how to implement this AML concept in your own projects. Once you have these AML approvals, you might want to modify them. So we'll go briefly over how to do this. And finally, we'll provide a checklist. This checklist is just a list of items that you need to consider when you want to implement this idea within your DOA system. Yeah. OK. So an AML change. It's just an extension of the AML STC concept that you have seen in the past. So it's just an option, a, a possibility for you to, to get your uh, change approved for several aircraft models and types under a single certificate, be it an STC, a minor change, or a major change. So you have seen this in the past, and this is nothing new, but now with the new certification memorandum we are about to release, we are extending this concept also to minor changes and major changes. So the basic concept remains the same. The change is intended for use or for, uh, in, in applications that are similar in design and use, and are meant to have the same certification baseline data. By this we mean that all the, when you want to approve this particular modification applicable to several models, you, they should set a common certification baseline that, that, that is a common set of compliance demonstration, a package that is applicable to all of them. Of course, you will need to add some adaptations, minor modifications, to really make it work where, for, for each of the models where you want to install, for example, if you are installing an avionics system, there will be some core topics. For example, if you are installing a top, uh, TCAS, you will have some basic uh, demonstrations to be done regarding the data it transmits and how it does it. But beyond that, there will be some minor items that you can manage with an AML, uh, within the your AML that could be related maybe to the physical installation of those equipments in the, in the racks of whatever aircraft where you want to install this, this equipment. So some general considerations for AMLs. AMLs, STCs, and manual changes may cover products of several TC holders. This is just like in the past. AML major changes are limited to the products of TC holders that are applying for this uh, AML major change. So this is just a way to, for us to allow TC holders also to enjoy the, the flexibility that these uh, that this AML approvals afford. AMLs are not meant, uh, as we said, AMLs are meant to have a common certification demonstration package. So for this reason, we do not allow to mix different products within a single AML. So you are not to include, for example, CS23 products and CS25 products within the same AML. Within the same AML. Why do we do this? Simply because we do not think that uh, you can provide the same uh, compliance package when you are uh, facing two different, uh, two significantly different certification bases. And uh, along these lines, the general pr principle for this kind of approval is that they should share the same common uh, certification basis. Normally, it should be related to the most stringent certification basis among the different uh, models included in your AML list. Again, for each model in the AML, you should provide the certification basis and amendment level to the areas affected by the modification. 
And you must ensure that the applicability of this certification baseline data is established for all the uh, models that you, wish to, that you wish to include in the, in the ML. So we have to do this because sometimes, for some types of, um, of applications, the applicability of this AML concept is not clearly well established. For example, when you have uh, there are a couple of examples of examples in the slide, systems that can directly control the aircraft and depend on the aircraft feedback for design, installation of uh, that require a compliance demonstration for electromagnetic compatibility here for lightning effects every time. So the basic idea is that you, you should create an AML uh, application where there is a single compliance package. If every time you want to extend the applicability of the AML to another model and you have to do extensive compliance verification, then probably this is not, uh, not the right project for you to, to implement this AML concept. In any case, early coordination with the ASA is strongly recommended. I think this is the, one of the main recommendations to, to take away today. Normally, uh, there are many variations and none of them can be totally uh, covered in the certification memorandum. So I encourage you to contact your PCMs and DOE team leaders to, to figure out when you, you, you might be uh, applying this uh, idea correctly. Some other examples where the application of the AML concept is not properly um, established or it's not probably not going to work very well is those for which you have to demonstrate uh, an acoustical impact for, because for this case normally it's going to be different for each aircraft or rotorcraft. Those where the, uh, the flight manual supplement is not going to be the same applicable for all models. Similarly, when the operas operational suitability data is not, to, not going to be common to, to all the models in the AML. Again, naturally, and this is uh, like what you have seen before, installation instructions and instructions for continuous airworthiness should be adequate and should be provided for every model in the, in the AML. So once you get an AML approval, you may wish to, to modify it. Here the slide tells you that changes to an ML change are classified and managed as per part 21A, 117 and 91. This is nothing, nothing new, this is just a way to say that the uh, ML changes are managed like any other major change or STC. So there are two most local ways to change an AML approval. One is to include additional models and this is uh, considered to be a major change by itself. The other way to, to modify an AML approval will be, of course, to modify the technical scope of that uh, change, even if you're not including new models into the, into the list. Uh, this is, of course, uh, not a problem, but you, you will have to consider the definition in Part 21A91 to determine if those modifications constitute a major change or not. So there is a appreciable effect of mass, strength, etc. So there is nothing really new for you to consider. Of course, whenever you introduce a new uh, item into the AML, you will need to provide some additional substantiation. This should not be extensive because, as we said, we are expecting to have a common core compliance package. But, of course, you will probably will need to provide some additional information regarding some of the specificities of the installation in a particular model. Additionally, all configuration changes should be tracked in a systematic way. For this, most applicants use uh, what we call an AML table and we will provide you a template at the, at the back of the presentation for you to consider. This template is not to be considered a requirement, it's just information for you to, to use as a guideline, nothing else. Oh, sorry. So we can go through the checklist that will tell you some, some of the basic items to, to consider when you are implementing an AML, uh, you're trying to implement an AML approval within your DOA system. First, aircraft models and types on the ML should share the same certification baseline data. The purpose of the amification should be the same for all impacted aircraft model types. The areas of the modification that are different for a model are properly documented. 
you should have a common certification basis for all the for all the models. Normally, this will be connected to the most stringent one in the in the in the list. So normally, the most recent one. Of course, complete compliance package is provided for all the all the affected areas in the listed aircraft model type. Further to this, you should provide adequate instructions, installation instructions for a consistent and compliant installation in each model in the AML. Clear boundaries are established and documented. Instructions to continuous robustness, if, if applicable, are, are to be provided for each model in the AML. And finally, or is the impact to be made against all the models in AML, and when an impact is identified, you should provide the OSD data for each model as required. As a final slide, here I provided a template of, the, of what an approved model list table looks like. This is a significantly simplified version of the table that we provided last year. We have done this uh, simplification based on the experience we have seen from different uh, AML STCs that we have seen approved during the previous year. So basically, you are expected to provide the information regarding the type certificate number, or normally it's a reference to the TCDS. Of course, the name of the type certificate holder, together with the type of models that you want to make this, um, uh, this uh, AML approval applicable to the certification basis for each model, and the associated technical documentation. So normally, this is related to the documents that you already provide for NSTC you apply for. So it could be the master data list, uh, flight manual supplement, ICA, etc. So this is all from my side. So take any questions that you would like to make. <coughs> Yes. I'm coming. Um, you mentioned something about the. <coughs> Good morning, Fred Steinberg and Human Aviation. Um, you may, made a made a remark about flight manuals uh, supplements. So, yeah. if your change is affecting the flight manual, uh, can you still have an AML STC uh, with several flight manual supplements in it, or is then an AML STC no option? So normally you 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 can modify the flight manual supplement. This is not a problem. But normally we expect to have a common flight manual supplement for all the models, because uh, just the, the the basic idea is to have a common uh, the basic idea is to have a common compliance package. So you can make you can make a flight manual supplement which is applicable to 20 or 30 models. This is normally not a problem. But uh, if you start, if you need for technical reasons to modify the procedures that the the, the crew has to, to to follow in failure cases or whatever, and those are different for each, uh, the, um, those are significant and different for each of the models, then probably you are not in the right uh, position to to apply this uh, AML concept. Okay, thanks. Mm. Yeah, no. yeah, Patrick Moore from PMV Engineering. Uh, one question about um, AML concept. If we have already an STC on one model uh, approved, is it possible to extend to an AML STC? Yes, this has been done in the past already. So you can uh, apply for a major change to an STC and identify the original STC as the, um, as the source and just provide uh, additional models to be included in the into approval. And an additional question, if, uh, if I have some tests uh, ground test procedure, for example, to perform on, on uh, to con to demonstrate compliance. Do we have to do we have a limitation for each model, or is it AML is not appropriated for this? Mm, what do you mean? Uh, for example, if I have a ground test procedure to perform the aircraft on an mm. aircraft to demonstrate compliance, uh, if I do it on a three twenty, I think, mm -hmm. for example, and uh, I want to apply for an AML on a three twenty and seven three seven, yeah, do I have a limitation on a three twenty first, and then seven three seven? I have to do some ground testing, complementary ground testing. Well, you should complete the demonstration, the compliance demonstration before you get the approval for the. So, if you need to do some test on every aircraft, then those need to be completed before you include those two models in the AML. 